So now in this video, we're going to use the uh, 74 HC 14 integrated circuit again. So HC is the high speed CMOS version of this. There's other versions. 7400 is a 7400 series. So in the 7400 series, the 14 means that it's a hex Schmidt trigger inverter integrated circuit. So hex means there's six of them right there. Inverter means right there inverter that uh, whatever we give the input high or low one or zero five or zero volts uh, within the range I should say whatever we give in the output will be the opposite so one in will get zero volt zero out zero in will get one out in this case one means somewhere around five volts zero means somewhere around zero volts or ground right there for the circuit though we are not going to have an output that is inverted from the input because we're going to take two of them. You can take the output of one and use that as the uh, signal for the input of another one. You can combine logic gates however you want to make a different logic gate. So we're going to take these inverters and turn them into a buffer. So if we have a high input, we'll have a high output. A low input will have a low output. We're just inverting it because that's what this integrated circuit does and just feeding it to another one so it gets inverted again. We're going to give our signal to a 2A and then a 2Y will be the input for 1A and then 1Y will be our output for the LEDs as you can see here. So it's a Schmidt trigger which means that there's not a specific point that divides high from low, a specific voltage. If the input's already high, you have to go down a little extra to get a low input. If the input's already low, you gotta go up a little extra to give a high input right there. So that middle ground keeps it from flipping right at a certain point and uh, prevents the output from flipping uh, rapidly. If the voltage is kind of wavering or something, you get a nice uh, definite output change because you gotta go a little extra distance through the uh, input right there so it's a little more uh, definitive but uh, in any case when the output is high here this is how we got the LEDs wired up it gets as close to 5 volts probably 4 volts as close to 5 volts as it can get though red LED will light up we'll have a current path to ground when the output there is low will be connected to ground as good as we can get and uh, the blue LED will light up we'll have 5 volts going to ground there. We're going to use the 1000 ohm resistor to protect the blue LED 220 ohm to protect the red LED because blue LEDs are brighter than red LEDs with the same current so we'll have a lot less current through the blue LED but it'll be about the same brightness as the red LED so the high speed CMOS version of this integrated circuit always consult the data sheet though don't go by the numbers I'm giving you even uh, check the data sheet and uh, make sure but in any case we can power this with 2 to 6 volts, but uh, the high speed CMOS version. But these integrated circuits, usually you're safe with 5 volts. I haven't come across one, I think, yet where 5 volts uh, won't work. But uh, in any case, 5 volts is probably good. Check the data sheet though. High speed CMOS version, though, we can go 2 to 6 volts. We can also output sinking or sourcing 25 milliamps of current. So that's any one of these uh, outputs, the Y right there. But we have a maximum total of 50 milliamps. And so if you're using more than two of them, you have to probably limit the current below 25 milliamps sinking or sourcing. But in any case, don't exceed 50 milliamps sinking or sourcing uh, total when it comes to the output. Don't leave the inputs floating either. You'll see that I have wherever it says A, if it's not part of the uh, two that I'm using here, I'll have it to a power supply rail so that it has a definitive voltage on it. Uh, but the two that we're using, they're not going to be floating either. One has the trim pot connected to it, and then the other one has the output, which uh, since the trim pot will be given a voltage, it'll have a definite output of either high or low, and that'll be fed to the input of the other one right there. We're going to give the signal to uh, 2A, and then 2Y is going to give a signal to uh, 1A right there which will determine what that 1Y is for the output. So that'll be 1Y. 
So now here's the integrated circuit on the board. Of course you have to power it. So VCC is the positive supply. And uh, there you can see we got that there. And then ground. So that's pin 14. Ground is pin 7 down here. You can see that we are going to ground. So our inputs that we don't want to leave floating, I put to the other supply rail so that they would stand out a little bit more. So those are the unused inputs, A, right there. And then for this one here, 3A, since our ground is to the left, I put that to the positive supply. Now, you can see here that we have the uh, trim pot right there. I'm putting it to 2A, as I said before. So we got the trim pot, we got 2A there. So that's 1A, 1Y, and then 2A, 2Y right there. So 2Y is the output, we're feeding that to 1A the input right there and uh, so 2y to 1a we already talked about y down there why we're doing it not y the uh, letter for the output so now we'll uh, zoom back and I think that covers the integrated circuit part of it enough we have the uh, 1y output there with the LEDs so what we're gonna do is just take advantage of the supply rail input pins of the integrated circuit and uh, the blue one so you can see here the uh, long lead the anode goes towards the positive supply we're going to put that directly to the positive supply we're going to shuffle the uh, resistor down a little bit but in any case there you can see that we got the shorter lead even though it's bent crazy it's shorter up one spot right there and uh, take a one kilo ohm 1000 ohm resistor go to the output second pin down of uh, one right there and go to the short lead the cathode so it doesn't matter order but we do have to put the LED in the right direction red LED we're gonna take the uh, short lead the cathode right there and put it to ground as you can see there and then the line lead the anode we're gonna go down one row again we're swapping position LEDs with uh, resistors right there and uh, doesn't matter order again as long as the LED is in the right way and so we're going to the output and it really doesn't want to go into that spot today for some reason but uh, it's bent like crazy but I think it made a good uh, enough connection so in any case that's it let's go back turn the power supply on right there and you can see the red LED is lit that's telling us that we have a high output because a high input and there you can see we're all the way to the positive supply right there so high input and you can see we got ground on that side of the LED so you know that the output is as close to the positive supply as it can get and I'll turn this down we'll see the blue LED lights up so now there's somewhere around two milliamps of current for the blue LED you can see how bright it is and for the red LED somewhere around 11 milliamps of current 12 right there a lot more current but it uh, looks like the blue LED might still be uh, brighter right there. But uh, we'll zoom in. And you can see we turn relatively close. Positive supply. Other side of the LED. Red LED. The ground. So that lets us know we have a high output. Because the other side of the LED is low. Other side of the blue LED is high right there. That lets us know we have the output is close to ground there is it can a low right there and the trim pot is also all the way to ground right now and then you can see the uh, middle ground voltage there where the output stays in whatever position we last put it into that's the hysteresis so in any case this video has gone on long enough but hope you enjoyed make sure you check out one of the other videos that I'm posting the screen if you can donate, please do. I have links down below, but otherwise, I appreciate that you watch the videos. That helps a lot too, so thanks for that. I'll see you in the next video.